This is Coda Radio, episode 215 for July 25th, 2016. And welcome to Coder Radio, Jupiter Broadcasting's weekly talk show, taking a pragmatic look at the art and business of software development and related technologies. This episode is brought to you by our two fine sponsors, DigitalOcean and Linux Academy. I'll tell you more about those great sponsors as this here show goes on. My name is Chris, and joining us every single week is the man watching the Florida State like a hawk. Why, yes, is Mr. Michael Dominic. Hello, Mike! That's right. I watch Florida from afar <laughs> in the equally corrupt and uh, dysfunctional state and, of New Jersey. And you think to yourself, I'll never be going back there again. But I am watching uh, you, Florida. I'm watching you. You know what? There's something about voting in a swing state that is it's uh, exciting, equally. Right? Is, yeah. It is. It's like, mm, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to be in a swing state. Washington's never considered a swing state. Uh, you guys are, no, what, what is Washington? Democratic oh, or Republican? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got some good, we got some good red streaks in us uh, from here and there, some strong ones. But yeah, it's to- it's a it's a toast blue state. So uh, we're not what we're here to talk about today. No, we are here to talk. Although it does seem like politics are practically unavoidable. But no, we are here to talk about yes, the Coda Radio Coding Challenge. Something that's gone down in the news that uh, is something we've ruminated over for quite a while. Um, and then we are also are going to get a little update on Mr. Dominic's Rattel Pro Linux Switch experience, which I ho- which I hope has gone well. An audio review, in fact. Ooh, an yeah. audio review, if it were. You know, I uh, I don't know, Mr. Dominic. I think we should probably start with, uh, I mean, I hate to do these I told you so stories, but, <laughs> I mean, come on. This story, Yahoo is getting bought out by Verizon. And uh, yeah. it's a big day for Yahoo, Marissa Meyer writes. Mm. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been following this story since since basically with a lot of interest since Marissa Meyer was hired and watching Yahoo sort of battle with this problem where their investment in Alibaba is is more valuable than the, everything else the company has to offer and struggle with this idea this concept that they see themselves as a media company that has to drive advertising revenue so they hired Katie Couric and uh, who, uh, David Pogue from the New York Times and they tried to make a media company and what's so, what's so odd to me is when you talk to developers and engineers and sysadmins that work at Yahoo, Yahoo has some super cool, deep technology. They are fundamentally a technology company. They really are cool. They have some neat stuff that they yeah. do, the neat stuff they've built, cool stuff that they've contributed to the open source world. And I don't know what happens to any of that as this purchase goes through. Yahoo's going to get all busted up. I mean, AOL got bought up by Verizon, too. Well, what's really interesting is, at least to me, but again, if you remember the 90s when all these Yahoos and AOLs were coming up, they were going to kill the telcos, right? Mm -hmm. And when the business model of giving shit away for free on the internet turned out to be, you know, not viable, (laughs) who had to save them? And and, and let's be clear, this is a rescue, right? This is a, a bailout. Five fat cats, four fake fat cats. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, Marissa has uh, Marissa Mayer has cut them to the bone. Layoffs have been, pink slips have been. I mean, I don't want to go into it, but pink slips have been super common in Yahoo, Yahoo New York, Yahoo. Um, the only thing making money was they're sticking Alibaba and they're yeah. sticking Yahoo Japan because they're weirdly popular in Japan, right? Correct. And yeah. that was sort of a weird pressure that put on the company when the rest of Yahoo looks like it's the piece that's costing you money. But if you uh, if you follow financials at all, that crazy whack job Jim Cramer, who I actually find tremendously entertaining and like, <laughs> uh, he actually did a breakout of Yahoo once where Yahoo Inc., like Yahoo, the a company, was worth negative dollars. Yeah. Meaning that their stake in Alibaba and Yahoo Japan was worth, was actually dragged down by the fact that the rest of the company existed. Correct, exactly. Um, and, you, and you remember, uh, Starboard Value had gotten on the board, and they were basically pressuring Mayer to do this, right? They yeah, were. they're an activist group. I mean, they're the ones that uh, took over uh, Olive Garden not too long ago. And um, the issue really came down to this sort of conflict where they could never really quite 
focus in on something to make a lot of money at it. But you know, Mike, you and I have sort of noted the other uh, the other sort of meta trend, which is almost way more interesting than the actual sale, and that is the build up and then steady destruction of Marissa Mayer as a CEO. She was the darling CEO where she was on Vanity Fair. She had photo okay. shoots. She was yeah. the savior. She was going in well, and she was going to show Google how a company could do it. And well, everybody wrote yeah. about her. And then, as we've seen for the last couple of years, two years, it slowly turned to total, total hate. I mean, it has so been... I, I, I think you're forgetting history a little bit, right? Marissa Mayer could have been the CEO of anything, and big, any tech company, and you know she was held up. It, it was during the uh, what is it, Elena or Ellen Palo, uh, you know the the sexual harassment lawsuit with Kleiner Perkins, right? It, all of these things happened at the same time, and there was definitely a, a gender issue in tech. So, I and we on the show had a question like, why is Yahoo all of a sudden exciting, other than the whole personality aspect of it? And uh, I think it turned out Yahoo really isn't that exciting. Right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it, it's great to see more women in positions of power, but you know, no one. And, and I think to to her credit, honestly, her biggest mistake was taking the job. Because mm-hmm. what could you have done to save Yahoo? There now with this with this Alibaba investment and the way it made the right. way this the, the way the way it shifted the company. Essentially, what it did is it made. Yahoo wanted to be a media. They're a tech company who wanted to be a media company who was actually an investment firm that invested in Alibaba, and that's how they were making all of yes. their money. Yeah, their only profitable business was a venture investment in Alibaba, and and that is obviously an overstatement, but profitable to the level level that Wall Street for a public company needs to see. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. I mean, um, and yeah. that's why the board wanted her to make this move because they're going to get a nice payday. Now, I actually still I disagree with you though. I think this was a perfect example of what we do in tech, where we build somebody up as the hero of a company, whether it be Jobs, whether it be Satya Nadella or Marissa Meyer. And you know what? If you look in the show notes, just in the last six months, I think it was, I went back six months and I have eight or nine stories about what a what a horrible failure she is. And if you go back two years. All of the stories are about what a visionary she is, about how she's changing up the culture, about how she's bringing in great talent, about how she's making great acquisitions like Tumblr. She's really a visionary for the mm, company. Sure. It is it is it is a complete 180. And I think it, it's this false sort of hype train that we get caught up on when in reality the writing was always on the wall with the way that they're financially structured. It was well. So let, let's let's take it through a different lens. I definitely hear you about the personality. I mean, Jack Dorsey has this kind of thing too, right? If you yeah, were to open one. a company mm-hmm. selling lemonade online, or you know, who's another big one right now? You know, actually, uh, uh, oh gosh, come on, Tesla guy. Um, uh, yeah. Although I would say Elon Musk Elon. actually is doing things that are interesting. Yeah, I know, but know? it's still a huge yeah. personality cult right now around yeah. him. But you know. Let's go. Let, let's go up ten thousand feet in the air here and get the bird's eye view. Yahoo was a company that made products effectively. Well, you can call them services if you want. That they did not sell. Right, things were free, and then they bought, you know, Tumblr for a ton of money, which also doesn't sell you anything. I think the real story here, or a story here, is, you know, these give your content away for free businesses aren't going to be so profitable in the future. Um, I don't know what that means for media. And yeah, it is a little weird that you just put up a glamour shot of her. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird that they did that? And now yeah, this, I mean, this article says Marissa Mayer has become the symbol yeah. of Silicon Valley's disaster tokenism, uh, which is another interesting take on it, but I think that's also wrong. I don't think well, it was I, tokenism. I, no, I, that, see, I think that's right. I think if a man had taken over Yahoo, just a generic, boring white man, correct, right? Correct. Yahoo would never have gotten the PR bump that it did. I don't know. I mean, when Satya Nadella uh, uh, took over from Balmer, Satya Nadella is an immigrant and it's not a white male. I don't think that's what it is. It, I it's think a it, good story. No, it's. it's I, I'm crediting Yahoo's marketing department. Like you should do that, right? If you have a story to tell, do it. But you know. I never understood why people were excited about Yahoo because on the facts, it's not a good business to be in, right? Writing content for free, building Me Too products compared to Google. And by the way, you have tremendous brain drain, so you have to overcompensate all your developers to keep them there. Remember the uh, work from home policy change? We talked about that for a bit. Right. But that was the right thing to do because how many people do you think were double dipping and moonlighting on Yahoo? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, she like she's let go. By the way, she's gonna get a fifty-seven million dollars severance package. 
<clears throat> I just think it's been interesting to watch the coverage change. And Yahoo was always sort of, they were always on this course. And I think that's sort of the yeah. key thing to know. But how do how do you? Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. I don't really know what the lesson is to walk away from there. I think it is interesting that I even mentioned the name Elon Musk, and the anime is already in the chat room going to defend him. And that's exactly the point I'm talking about. We 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 these people become cultural icons. They are irreverence that we uh, we dare not speak bad of. Uh, and we hold them up to such to such this unbelievable expectation. And the fact that I even mentioned yeah. his name as somebody who might be overblown, he comes to his defense and says, don't drag him down. Like, that is the exact kind of monkey response I am talking about that led us to building up Marissa Meyer to something that she, she could never have been because the company was fundamentally flawed. And then it becomes a two-year campaign of tearing her down. And now she's, I've read articles that say she's Silicon Valley's biggest em- embarrassment, that she can never return to tech. That she that was. That doesn't seem fair. That that seems. Who who? All right. Who could have done it? Who could have done the job better than she did? Nobody. Other than her weird Wizard of Oz part. Well, I don't know. I mean, it seems like some of the hires she made were good. And yeah, I, I thought when she bought out Tumblr, I thought, okay, I can see a direction they're going. Makes no sense, but keep going. Yeah, well, I mean, I can see maybe they're going to go in a direction like this, you know, because they were going to truly try to build up eyes for advertising. But no, they yeah. need they needed money, right? They needed the other businesses to bring in revenue to offset the value of Alibaba, or honestly, they needed Alibaba to tank. Yeah. Otherwise, it was always going to be better to sell the company. Hmm. I think you're right. And lay everybody off, which is what right. she did, right? She became a she became a hatchet man. Um. I don't know. I, I actually think she's much smarter than some of the press today is giving her credit for. Mm-hmm. And that Yahoo Yahoo wrote its own death warrant in 2001, right? It just took 15 years to die. What do you think about um, – so I don't know. I'm trying to think in this case. I, I, I know for a fact that somewhere in the back of my mind there's a technology that Yahoo probably runs for me that uh, I would kind of care if it turned off. But I don't know exactly. Maybe it's pipes. I can't remember exactly what it is that uh, that I that I that I they use. But I'm you know yeah, this. Yeah, I'd say I don't agree with you. I think I think most of their technology is outdated. Perhaps. But the the moment has made does give me just a quick pause, and I think to myself, I know we've had this conversation a million different ways, but right. every time a company that I don't particularly like buys a company that I kind of like. Or you know something to that degree. I always think to myself, what would I do if something I depended on today got 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 bought out by a company I no longer want to be associated with? Sort of like when Lenovo bought out the ThinkPad line. I'm not a big fan of Lenovo as a company. I don't like some of the deals they've done, some of the environmental practices they've had, some of the ways they've treated their workers, and I don't like Epic spyware, the Superfish stuff, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have, I really don't like Lenovo as a company, but I liked the yeah. ThinkPad as a hardware brand for a long time. Same with the IBM X series servers. Some of the best Intel X86 based servers yeah. in the business for a long time were those. No longer the case. Um, and I I, I reflect so on this and I think. Just an argument for you should be using software that you're paying for and that is profitable for the vendor to create? No, I think it goes beyond that. I think it is, it's, this is where I get my hippie hat on. And I think I have to own the whole stack. I have to have everything open. I have to be able to have a clear, you know, uh, eject handle. And that is I can fork the project and hire somebody to develop it for me. I have to have a somewhat of an idea that's going to be around for a while and the service won't just one day get turned off. Hmm. You know, and it's actually almost more important on personal stuff than it is my business stuff. Because in my business life, it's part of my job to stay fluent on this stuff and, you know, switch tracks if I need to. But at home, I want to be able to set up something that automates our life or makes life simpler. And I want to be able to set it up two years ago and have it still work two years down the road. And that actually is not very easy. And I don't know what, I, I don't know what you can, it's like you almost need, you almost need certain types of software to be put into a trust. Like it will continue to survive regardless of what happens to the parent organization. Um, I'm thinking of even simple things like home media software that, uh, that sometimes can be flaky and or goes away. The vendor no longer supports it. And you're just left with a piece of equipment that no longer works. This sort of unknown long term. What's going to happen to a piece of software? What's going to happen to a service that I rely on, wh- whether it be something small or it be something as large as a Yahoo company? 
And is that just sort of the condition of human beings creating software for machines? Is that these things just happen and there's no way around it? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, things change, right? Things go away. People, companies get bought. Company companies go bankrupt, or you know, become evil. I think JB uh, Hawk of Truth is right, though. That's why companies like IBM do so well because people will make those long-term commitments. See, here's my thinking: as an individual, I can't do that, but I can self-host. I can self-install. I can self-maintain. Just you know, it's more work. I don't know. Anyways. Kind of, kind of a disappointing end to the Yahoo story. And we'll see what kind of properties happen. We'll see what happens to the individual pieces as they get sliced up. And I'd be curious if anybody in the subreddit could link us to uh, Yahoo open source projects that maybe we should know more about. Uh, so we keep an eye on them, see what happens to them. Please link those up so we keep an eye and see how they progress. Any other thoughts on the whole thing, Mr. Dominic? No, none. I mean, I... I... You know, it, the problem with the Yahoo thing is it's a prism in which uh, – hashtag prism, thank you, hey uh, Ed – that you can see lots of different things, right? There's a gender story here. There's a hype story here. I personally think there's a whole you need to make money off your software story here. But that's probably the least sexy of all the stories. Um, You're right. There are there, – there, that's probably why I find the story to be fascinating because it does have right. those – And maybe the sad fact is that there was so much wrong at Yahoo that – Pick your poison, right? Uh, we should move on to happier things. All right. Well, why don't we? Uh, we'll take a minute here and uh, mention Linux Academy. But uh, before, I'll just tease a little bit. We're gonna we're about to find out why Mr. Dominic was equipped with two beers and a lawn uh, earlier this week. He tweeted this picture out. I see. Well, that may be potentially be three beers. I'm not sure if the if the bottle is poured into the glass or if the. We'll find out if that's three beers or two, and why one of them is a Coors, and what he was doing for this show. At that very moment. But first, I want to mention Linux Academy. Head over to linuxacademy.com slash coders to get the Coder Radio discount, discount and to support this here show. Oh, you know what? Coder Radio is the perfect audience for the Linux Academy platform. It's not just Linux essentials and advanced topics, which are extremely valuable for you guys. But it's also all of the technology around it. Android development, PHP, Python, Ruby. The Azure services, brand new addition to Linux Academy, expanding rapidly and extremely useful. I know some of you guys have been looking at that. And, of course, some of you end up working on OpenStack as well. They have the best courseware in the business. LinuxAcademy.com slash coders. Go there to support this show. Learn more about the entire DevOps category of courses. If you're looking for something specific, there's a good chance they have it. They also have really cool technology behind it. Everything from the platform, which spins up virtual machines on demand that matches the, di the distro you've chosen, the documentation and the virtual machines match that. They have instructor mentoring available when you need it. They have a great system for saying how much time you have available and a automatically generate that availability plan for you. So, okay, I've got a couple of hours on these three days this week, and this is the time I'm going to dedicate to Linux Academy. You can still actually get things accomplished with their availability planner. It plans it all out for you. It gives you notifications and reminders about quizzes as they're coming up. They have great in-depth resources that put you in the middle of everyday common exercises so you walk away feeling like you really know what you're doing. That's one of my favorite parts. Check them out at linuxacademy.com slash coders. You can give them a tour there. They have great services for teams. And they're growing all the time. When new technologies come onto the scene, Linux Academy is following it because they're Linux enthusiasts. You can learn more by going to linuxacademy.com slash coders. See how everything works? Check out the labs, the video courses, the learning plans, the practice exams, the note cards, the cert training. Even the nuggets are pretty damn cool. Deep dive into a single topic. LinuxAcademy.com slash coders. Big thank you to Linux Academy. And thank you to everybody who visits that site to support this show. LinuxAcademy.com slash coders. Okay, Mr. Dominic, I, you know it's Twitter, so you're going to get some crap when you post a Coors on Twitter. Which, by the way, I defend your choice. I'm not saying this is the go-to beer. I'm not even saying this in the top 20 beers. But on a warm afternoon when you're out in the grass... There is a place for a Coors, especially when, when you want a high volume of beer for a reasonable U.S. dollar. 
That's absolutely correct, and I am surprised that all the Coors vitriol, and frankly, disappointed. I know. I mean, it's not like we're coming out and we're saying we're Coors advocates and we're drinking it all the time. But I am coming out and saying that I am a Coors advocate. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, okay, I'm going to diverge you there a little bit. <laughs> so why why were you out? Is this, uh, I, I'm taking maybe the backyard, this is your neighbor's, you broke into somebody's house and uh, sat on their deck, and we're starting- No, that's, that's my backyard from the porch. I was grilling. Oh, um, Yes, and thinking about Coda Radio, huh? Thinking about Coda Radio. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Enjoying a fine Coors beverage. And also a Yards IPA, I see. And a Yards IPA, yes. Of course, we start with the Yards because, you know, you go down market as you uh, oh, continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just one of those days looking through the coding samples. I won't say that the deeper I got into the Coors, the easier the grading became. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe. How did the first challenge go? What were your thoughts? Uh, so a lot more responses than I expected. Well, that seems uh, good. A lot more. A lot more. Yes, hmm. it was pretty good. I, I think there's a few kinks we need to work out of the process. Mm-hmm. Like some came in emails, some came on the subreddit, some sent them directly on GitHub. Um, in the future, I think uh, subreddit probably makes the most sense. Not GitHub. Well, put them on GitHub, but send link it in the subreddit. I know there's some concern about cheating or whatever. Well, I think some people probably aren't Reddit members. I think that's the other thing. Oh, uh, <clears throat> we'll have to figure something out. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing because I think there's probably a fair portion that aren't. <laughs> Turns out Reddit not for everybody, Mr. Dominic. Turns out. Yeah. All right. So a good amount of submissions. Um, now, is there a grading process? I don't know what happens next. You have to tell me. So I just picked a winner. I didn't okay. do like points. Or I like, like this. This is a nice, clean system. No, yeah. uh, no DNC chair to rig. Just yeah. Okay. And the and the winner is Hillary Rodham. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of rigged. Oh. Um, uh, mm. uh, no, no, no. So the winner is Kyle with a Python solution. I know. All right, so Kyle, huh? Kyle had a Python solution. I that like it for the Blackjack a, Advisor. Yeah, we can show it on the screen if you like. Pow! I, there it I is. Link. There it is. Pow! Um, a Coda Radio mug is on its way to you, though the fact that you are cold blooded. <laughs> See what I did there, Python. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, be nice. careful with the hot coffee. What I really liked about Kyle's is that he actually gave me instructions in a markdown file and made it easy. That is nice but and, we and got, proper. Well, we, and proper, and it works. Now, we got submissions from languages as wide-ranging as VB, Swift, Rust, Python, obviously, a bunch of JavaScript, Go. I mean, we had everything. Okay, I respect to the Rust, for sure. But I have something, to the Rust. something tells me the VB was specifically to troll you. Uh, I, I believe it was, yes. Yes, the VB.net. Yeah, that was, that was great. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that was just fun to try to get running on a Mac. It was <laughs> I couldn't get it running on the retail at all. So I oh man, this way you got to have just a VM sitting around. No, no, you just lose. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it, it really good. Uh, a lot of people learned a lot about blackjack, which is great. Yeah, uh, I'm not responsible if you gamble away your rent money. <laughs> and yeah, so uh, we have to figure out a way to get Kyle his mug. Okay, I think that will. For Rikai or Angela. So he, Kyle, email Angela at jupiterbroadcasting.com. But we have a new challenge. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that's intense. Oh, wait, you know what? Uh, hold on. Wasn't I supposed to Do have an ad? No, wasn't I supposed to have a... Oh, I should, huh? That's good. But I was yeah. supposed to also have a stinger for this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's right. We're about to announce the Coda Radio Challenge this week, but uh, as per the uh, per the host rules, we will first mention our next sponsor, and that is DigitalOcean. Go to DigitalOcean.com and use our promo code CODERDIGITAL. It's one word, lowercase, and you apply it to your account. You apply it to your balance. You get $10. Here's the thing. DigitalOcean is a simple cloud hosting provider that's dedicated to giving you the best and fastest way to spin up a rig on their awesome infrastructure. Check out their pricing. Go to their pricing page, digitalocean.com slash pricing, and tab it over to hourly. That's what you're working with now. Look at those prices. Unbelievable. Three cents an hour for two gigabytes of RAM, a two core processor, 40 gigabytes of SSD, and three terabytes of transfer. You got something you need to experiment with? Do it. Try it over there. Coder Digital, $10 credit. You get it. Boom. You know, honestly, though, 
The five dollar rig, you you might be like, oh, 512 megabytes of RAM. I am totally a RAM snob, you guys. Legit, the computer I am showing you this web page on has 32 gigabytes of RAM in it. Okay, the machine that I'm talking to Mike in is just a dedicated Skype machine, 16 gigabytes of RAM. All right, I am a RAM snob, and let me tell you something. I make a lot of stuff work with 512 megabytes of RAM. It really goes to Linux. The Linux kernel is amazing, and when you combine it with an SSD, it's just super fast. And the fast CPU, 40 gigabit E connections into the hypervisors. Hypervisors are all running KVM, so Linux drivers realize their pair of virtualized drivers. This is what's beautiful: is the Linux, the Linux guest knows it's virtualized. So it's talking to the KVM with pair of virtualized drivers. So instead of emulating an entire disk I/O stack of drivers and fake emulators for controllers, it doesn't have to. It's Honey Badger about all that. It doesn't have to do any of that. It talks directly to the hypervisor, and the hypervisor goes to the disk. It is super fast, and that's why. I mean, it's not KVM is not the only one that does this, but it's one of the advantages you get with the DigitalOcean stack is it's Linux with KVM, and then VMs on top. If you can also load free BSD, they got lots of distros to choose from. Just use the promo code Coder Digital. One word, lowercase, at DigitalOcean.com. And a big thank you to DigitalOcean for sponsoring the Coder Radio program. All right. Back to the Coder Challenge. (laughs) So uh, what is the challenge for this week, Mr. Dominic? All right. The challenge this week is to burst into colorful flames like a firework (laughs) and unleash your coding creativity. This is beautiful. It sounds so. Uh, this is kind of a riddle. <laughs> is what that is. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I am calling this our Katy Perry challenge. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I can't disagree with that. All right. So the challenge is make Mike an app using the term app very loosely here that creates a YouTube playlist, or of or otherwise allows him to play his favorite Katy Perry music videos. Dark Horse, Roar. This is how we do. Teenage Dream, Last Friday Night, International Smile, and Unconditionally. Don't worry, all outlined in the show notes. Yes, the app must take advantage of the browser having cached his YouTube Red settings. Again, very I use Chrome, so that should not be a problem. All solutions must be tablet friendly. Okay. Tablet friendly. You, How is that possible on a tablet, though? Oh, you mean just the results have to be tablet friendly? Right. It just has to be. I'm assuming it's got to be a web solution, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I it mean, does. you can write it in anything you like. But. So, an app that creates a YouTube playlist or otherwise that allows Mike to play his favorite Katy Perry, Katy Perry music videos, Dark Horse, Roar, This Is How We Do, Teenage Dream, Last Friday Night, International Smile, and Unconditionally. Hmm. So you now, have uh, you have a YouTube Red account. So that I do. W- you want to watch these commercial versions of these videos. That's why. So and it is okay to force me to log in. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna have to. I think. Uh, right. I think you're gonna have to. Or I uh, there. Are, I think there are ways. If you like, you, you do a YouTube redirect. Actually, the browser will just oh, know that I have an account. Maybe somebody can figure that out. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you how I would do it, but I, I can think of several ways to skin this uh, this cat. Yeah. But it is imperative, imperative that there not be commercials. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because you got to get your groove on. Is that what it I is? I listen to Katy Perry about a hundred times a day. <laughs> okay. I don't think Love you're kidding. Katy Perry. Okay. I'm not kidding at all. <laughs> Love it. And those are indeed my favorite videos. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, there you so, go. And, and no, you yourself do not need a YouTube Red account because what YouTube Red does uh, is that since I have an account, it just won't, uh, you know, show me commercials right what's wrong with that nothing's wrong with that no nothing at all nothing at all just stroke it a little bit and, and if you manage to hijack my youtube red account bonus points <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> i don't believe you <laughs> okay i like this challenge this is good so all and they right, have until next quarter radio yeah they have until monday so chop chop so the best way to submit it would be through the subreddit right now I think through the subreddit, yeah. And if they just have like a philosophical reason that they just can't sign up for Reddit, would tweeting work? Yeah, you know, I think I think tweeting might work. Um, I would say emailing the show is probably the best. Thing. Okay, code radio Jupiter Broadcasting dot com or hit the contact page. So. You know what I've been looking forward to? Boy, we are booking this episode. <clears throat> Look at us, huh? I, I figured I wouldn't get to talk to you to the, about the Rattel for a while. 
but I, I think we will. Isn't that the plan? I want to. I want to. I mean, I could talk more about Katy Perry. People seem uh, rather riled up about. Okay, this good, good, chat. good, good. All right. So no, no, I want to talk about. Okay, no. If you, as long as you, because good, I want to. So because this legitimately no no sponsor payments for this episode by System Seventy Six. Legitimately, uh, if I needed a desktop PC for home and I had the money, I would buy this computer. And uh, so I've always wanted one, but I have never been in a position to buy one. And usually when it comes down to it, I end up, if I've got to buy a computer, it ends up having to be a laptop or something for the studio. So what, what's it like, Mike? Is it, is it quiet? Is it, uh, is it fast? Tell me everything. So I'm on it right now. <laughs> okay. Um, it has one huge negative drawback, actually. Mm, okay. It makes my MacBook feel incredibly slow. Oh, really? So it is pretty peppy. You have me it going is a little, Yeah, I see what I did there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not necessarily a fair comparison because the Raytel is a much, uh, well. No, you know what it is? It's, it's that got file got system. It's double the RAM, right? It's, yeah, and it's the file system. It's got double the RAM. And I actually think the SSD is faster. I think they, the clock is faster. Hmm. There are a few things um, in Ubuntu that aren't awesome. Mm-hmm. One of them is just like the shutdown and turn on speed. I think probably could use some love, but I do that once a day, right? So I don't really care. Other than that, it's been smooth sailing. Uh, my tool chain's still the JetBrains tool chain. It's a lot of WebStorm, a lot of RubyMine, a lot of Android Studio. Um, things just work, right? It, this is a pretty boring review. Uh, the hardware is nice. I would like a little more. This is going to sound weird, but the back, you have it, you're showing the image now, this back ports, that panel there actually has a lot of give, which sometimes I feel like I'm about to punch it in. I'd like a little more just oomph there. Mm, like a stronger I mean, but this plate. Is really, yeah, this is really nitpicky stuff. I mean, Ooh. it works fine. Yeah, it, you don't often plug and unplug things, but still, it's... it's oh, well, I, I actually do. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So I wanted to ask you, uh, here was, here's what I was wondering. This is not your first time trying out switching no. to Linux, and generally, the last couple of times went pretty well, and for the most part, things worked, but hardware had to change or something came up. Do you are you noticing an appreciable difference now by going with a machine that was built by a vendor with intending you to run Linux? Is there an appreciable so, difference if you, you know, had it's, built it's, it yourself? Do you think you would not really know the difference? It's funny you should ask today because uh, my wife's Surface has actually just been replaced by Microsoft because it was broken for three months and they got around to giving her a new one. Oh. Um, yay, Wi-Fi cards that don't work in machines that don't have Ethernet ports. Um, it's really great. <laughs> oh, so man. I will likely be getting the XPS back and I have a mild interest in like slapping a 1604 back on there because someone did say that they finally patched a driver for that hardware mm. and saying, okay, what is it like with drivers that work? Um, for those who didn't listen back, the, the issue I had with the most recent XPS 13 was that the Skylake drivers just don't work. I mean, the screen flickers, it freezes. It, 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 I mean, it is not usable in any meaningful way for any period of time greater than like 10 minutes. You know, if you downloaded, I bet you would have zero problems if you downloaded uh, the Ubuntu 16.04.1 ISOs, which were just released. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. The, the newest, if I, uh, the one that has all the driver updates in it. Yeah. I, someone twi- tweeted me, saying, I Twittered me because I'm 47,000 years old. Uh, that they did fix the Skylake uh, Intel. Mm-hmm. I believe that is true. Graphic crap. Having said that, I'm not sure that in the future, should I need a Linux laptop that I'm not going to you know, just get for free that was already paid for. I'm not sure that I wouldn't go with something like a System76. Because why, why deal with it? Yeah, that's sort of my take. Is even if um, the price is maybe isn't well, it's it's like a hundred dollars more, yeah. right? It's a hundred bucks more to get the system. This, but yeah, yeah. But it's almost it's almost like it takes it takes some of the question out of the back of your mind too. Um, that that I really I really you know I my, my there's a lot of different scenarios. But if something's acting weird, if something's crashy, I like having a bit of assurances, knowing that I'm, you know, the hardware is pretty solid for this particular task. Yeah. And again, the other thing I mention all the time is, for me, if I decide to get to a point where I want to reload a box, I don't want to waste three days doing that. I don't want to. I I don't want to fiddle with stuff that I fought with in the '90s. I did that. I've used computers a long yeah. time. I've built plenty of computers, and I've spent my time 
going and getting the drivers, using mm. alternative hardware until I can get the driver to enable the hardware on the device I need to do the other things I need. I've done that game plenty of times. It's just I'm just not really interested in it anymore. Yeah, I, I'm not super, like, in, yeah. That's the, like the whole administering the computer side of it I don't find particularly interesting at all. Yeah. Um, I'm also in the position of being, like, super busy for these last six months. So I have almost zero interest in, like, system configuration. <laughs> For instance, on the Raytel, I'm running stock Ubuntu. There's no, I changed one thing with um, uh, Unity Tweak, just to change the borders of Chrome, because it didn't match everything else I had. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There's a little bit of Apple user still there, isn't there? But it, and it's like it gets so close. Like if I could just yeah. tweak this. <laughs> That's about it, right? I mean, yeah. I'm using. Oh, and I got rid of the really weird orange. Uh, oh, uh, buttons on the top of every window because mm-hmm. those are also bad mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so i uh, i wonder if i wonder if you are an outlier of a potential so this is what i've been one trying to get at is i think there is a category of of people who are first adopters that are like yourself that have workflows they're moving over to linux Simply because there's no real compelling reason not to at this point. Not necessarily because of some massive Linux platform advantage. Although there is obviously some advantages in performance and price and uh, ease of uh, acquiring. And uh, all those things are nice. Not having to worry about licensing and activation and even having to worry about like with with the Mac downloading only from the App Store. All that kind of crap we hate dealing with. You don't have to worry about with Linux. That's nice, but that's not what's making you switch to it. What's making you switch to it is there's really not a compelling reason not to, right? Well, I, I, n- n- no, actually. Um, okay, good. I would, say, I would say the biggest driver is nothing that, well, it's unfair, right? Uh, Ubuntu in particular has become extremely boring and stable, which is the feature. Because, you know, I'm writing software that's unstable in its own right. Ha, ha, ha. So, I, <laughs> you know, I don't need my OS to be unstable. Yeah, no, there's less legit. But also the Macs have become increasingly a bad value. And as I'm unable to update them, it becomes a more permanent investment that it's just not worth it, right? If you, if you were to look and buy a new MacBook Pro right now, you're buying, I think it's like three-year-old hardware for top dollar still. There is no way to look at it. There's no favorable, favorable way to look at it because... Even by now, Apple, if they cared, could have released a statement or leaked a story to the Wall Street Journal or could Little have even yeah, even I mean, could have even just revved the chipsets in these machines. Even just even, you know, because like to say that there's no compelling reason to upgrade them is false. There have been substantial GPU releases and improvements that would be absolutely worth incorporating in machines that are often used for work and it just to me, that you're right. This is a huge, huge issue. And, and the problem is, is how do you really know when it's been fixed, too? Because right now, I'm, I mean, I don't, you don't need me to pull up the Mac Buyer's Guide because you know the numbers are horrible. You don't need me to do it. Yeah, and if, I don't know what they are. I mean, I don't, I don't watch this religiously, but I know, you know, the MacBook Pro you would buy is, on, is I think, actually the one I have and is three years old. So Yeah, 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 exactly. Maybe, maybe there's a half rev, but... Yeah. No, no. No, I mean, I don't think there is. No, yeah. I mean, okay, I'm all right. Now, you see, you got me doing it now. Now I'm looking. I, people hate it when I do this. So you're talking about the MacBook, the Retina or the non-Retina? I have the Retina. Okay. So I, have, I have the first Retina. Yeah. I know that. So the MacBook Pro Retina has not been updated for 433 days. We're now okay, measuring so the update. So there has been a rev, though. Yes. We're now there measuring the updates, years, though, yeah. in years. You're measuring those updates in years now. And... Here's where I want to do this really quickly. We don't have to dwell on this. How do you know when Apple has solved this problem? Because when they update, them, they will eventually update these. That just is one update. It's going to take two or three more releases before you can trust that they're going to continue to rev these in a way that's worth your investment. That is the core issue here, is they have lost so much trust across their hardware line for the last few years. That you're gonna, it's going to take years of updates before you're going to know what their new release cadence is. And look at the Mac Mini, which by all accounts could be the best entry-level machine for somebody who wants to get interested in iOS development that doesn't have a lot of money to invest but already has their own monitor, oh, mouse, the and keyboard. Mini, the Mac Mini is 
almost the worst computer you could possibly buy right now. 648 days, yeah. and legitimately, the last update to the Mac Mini, some argue, was a downgrade, so much so that the version of the Mac Mini before this one is selling like crazy on eBay right now. Because the, some, some prefer that model over this one, 648 days. So is that the core reason you switched to Linux? I mean, that seems like, I mean, that seems like a problem, but it doesn't seem like a problem that would make you want to upend your workflow. Uh, is the core reason no, but I I, I don't even think you're I, I, as as bad as it is to bring up the Mac buyer's guide. I, I think you're understating the problem actually. Okay, it's not just that the initial investment is bad; it's that you cannot upgrade the hardware. Like full stop, right? Yeah, you're stuck with it. You're stuck with it. Even the memory now is soldered in on some of them. You're right. No, no. I I mean, period. You can't upgrade the hardware. So you have to I buy mean, the most a... expensive one you can when you buy it. Right. <laughs> Which makes it pretty tough. Um, you know, I don't see the Macs as as real development workstations. I don't think they're going in that direction. I mean, they obviously are development workstations now, but I think in the future, you know, Tim Cook himself uses an iPad Pro mm -hmm. as his only computer, he says. That's what he says. I, I, I see them more as utilities, right? As, um, well, as sealed appliances, right? gadget appliances, which is just not what I want to be using. Now, having said that, if I hire somebody, I think it makes sense for them to use Mac because they can't break it. I mean, and, and, and that's where the, the walled garden kind of makes sense. Mm. I mean, Chromebook. Oh, Chromebook. First of all, you can't really do dev on a Chromebook. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're, you're just like... So, yeah. okay, here's my initial question. This is what got us on this rabbit hole. Is, yeah, go ahead. Go are ahead, you, do you think this is the beginning of a trend? So the other person I've been watching with some interest recently is Leo Laporte, who, uh, who famously poo-pooed Linux quite a bit um, a couple of years ago and then suddenly realized that, you know what, tinkering with your computer can be fun, and depending on which Linux you go with, there's tinkering that can be had. And he has gone through... Months now of a of a rabbit hole process of learning about Linux. He's bought uh, a System seventy six Oryx Pro, and he just bought another workstation that he's going to install free BSD on. Uh, he's like all in now. He's he's using the Oryx Pro to do his shows, um, running uh, Ubuntu GNOME. And uh, I think one of the things that draws him, based on what I've watched from him, is. He doesn't like the way commercial operating systems get drug around. He doesn't trust them security-wise, and he likes the security and trust and configurability of Linux. And then with FreeBSD, he likes sort of like their fundamentals and their philosophies. Um, and I'm watching you two guys both experiment with this and wondering if this is if there's going to be a lot more people doing this. Okay, so let, let's just back it up there. I strongly doubt that either myself or Leo Laporte is able... First of all, he's using BSD right now, by the way. Well, he's using Linux, too. Oh, is he? I, I heard just heard him talk about OpenBSD. Um, I, I, the security thing, I think, is a super straw man argument because I, I have a feeling that Leo Laporte and I, by accident, will create more security flaws than Apple ever could by, you know, malice. Um, assuming we're actually tinkering with our system, which is, by the way, a reason I don't, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not... So I would actually say, in a way, Lilo Port and I are counterexamples to each other. I disagree. Oh, I disagree. I think it's different reasons, but it's I, what the right. core element... I think there is technology enthusiasts who are sometimes early adopters or, uh, or trend watchers, I think, see this coming. I mean, I think this is something... That's the thing you two are sharing in common that perhaps is leading you here. For the, re the how you enjoy it or how you use it, those are unique to your particular work scenarios. I will, let, let, me, let, me, let me hit you with something else um, in a wider sense. You know, I've been talking a lot about Ionic, a lot about Docker, a lot about kind of back-end, more, quote, Linuxy development, right? And I know that's not really mm -hmm. a fair term. See, I have the sense that a lot of the interesting stuff isn't happening on the client side, isn't happening on the on you know, iOS in particular anymore. It's happening in the cloud. It's happening, and I hate that term, but it really containerization, right? Backend stuff, AI, bots, all of that's all server side. So to me, another reason that I think this makes sense is from a practical point of view, 
it's good to be working in an environment that mirrors my deployment environment to a point. Obviously, I'm not running a desktop on my deployment environment. Um, I guess I, I, I guess I wonder. So you're trying to say that? Are you trying to suggest there's some sort of like Mac flight? Like previous Mac guys are now turning away from it because I think I think there is a lot of unhappiness. I mean, I was listening to some Apple shows over the weekend, and you know, there's there's some grumpiness, right? Because those guys who do those shows are the same guys who spend four thousand dollars buying a MacBook Pro, exactly, and realize that the yeah. iMac for fifteen hundred dollars can match it at most tasks, or a computer you assemble. For, uh, not that they would right. want to, but a computer you could assemble it from Newegg. Um, and maybe run Windows 10 on it or whatever, you know, 900 bucks, and it's just as powerful as a higher-end Mac. But I don't think Apple's really in the, you know, power user business anymore. Or it doesn't feel like they are, right? Boy, I think the Final Cut team would disagree with you, and I think the people that are working on a few of the new features for Apple File System would disagree with you, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like it to me. We've been, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I hate to, I hate to, I don't like the direction the chat room is going with this conversation. So it's making me think that maybe we uh, should. Yeah, I think we should move on. I mean, look, you know, just a few more points about the hardware. Yeah, I'm not going to chide everybody for tribalism again today because I've done it a hundred times. But this is a really good computer. Seriously. It is slightly more expensive than the equivalent Windows computer I would could have bought. Mm. Um. But I got to be honest, I seriously would question not just going for the, uh, you know, for the System 76. And not necessarily them, right? It could be, who knows, by the time. One nice thing is this is a, a, a four to five year machine for me, not a two year machine for me. So next time it's time to update, I, I think I would definitely stick in this direction. Do you think you could see yourself in two years or a year popping in a new GPU for 150 bucks? Uh, I can see myself popping in uh, another hard drive, more RAM. A G- see, I don't do anything that requires okay. a GPU. So I'm just, yeah. Oh yeah, I was, I was, that's what I was, tr- actually, yeah. you answered the question. Well, so that's what I was trying to yeah. get to, is what are you going to be upgrading? Because that's one of the things I dislike about about machines with built-in video cards. And the one of the things I like about the Rattel is it still can fit a full-size graphics card. It can. Which, so, yeah, you can optionally put in a PCI card. I. Yeah. It, one thing is I've become much more of a purist about my work machines are work machines. And sure, yeah. we're like, I won't, I won't install games on my Mac anymore. It's um, probably a good idea. Because you know what? When I have no hard drive space, and I have no good way to resolve that. And I, this is going to be my super, um, you know, not fun person. I really believe Steam and games in general destroy Windows computers. I don't know why it happens. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, maybe. Or maybe it's that driver mantra you get in when you're always playing games. I'm not sure. Maybe that's what it is. It's constantly updating. Every time my wife installs Steam, I'm fixing her PC all the time. It's like, because <laughs> every game has a different version of .NET. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And they all like, like to oh, reinstall DirectX on Windows, I've noticed, too. Oh, of course. Too. We have DirectX is 7 through 4 million. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, just a closing note, um, the, just to sort of play off one of the main issues we've talked about on Linux before, uh, as far as developer per interest would be, would be software um, delivery and distribution. Mm. And snap yeah, the snap packages, I think, I really think it's going to be worth your attention at some point, maybe a year down the road, maybe six months. Uh, I'm really pleased that Canonical held a snap sprint event. They brought in about 70 folks, maybe more, into one location, fed them and put them up in rooms for like four or five days. And, you know, they created code there at the event, significant code, uh, and made significant progress. And it looks damn good. I mean, I really think they're going in the right direction here. So um, it's one of the things we've talked about since practically episode, I don't know, probably 10 or 20 on the show, maybe even episode one or two, is this particular problem. And they are really close to making something great. And they they announced that they're going to have the ability to have shared, uh, like, components. So say you decide to create an app that requires GTK. Instead of you having to figure out how to package up all the GTK stuff, you'll be able to just incorporate that. Just pull it in. You just be able to pull that in. You're just going to be able to pull it and all kinds it's, of stuff like that. I mean, it sounds very Gradle esque in terms of dependencies, but I'm probably wrong because I haven't really looked at it. Uh, one thing I, I was reading some about it. It seems like there's a, there was a little bit of uh, like drama around Fedora not supporting it. Yeah, yeah. But there, however, there was there was representatives from the Fedora project there. 
And I think some of the complaints that the Fedora group has will probably going to be addressed like around how they do confinement and other things. So I think that's the kind of stuff that within, like I say, six months, probably going to be all smoothed out. I think that's great. Um, you know, any, I, I'm a big fan of standardization. That's why I like Docker. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been, I've been, it's been nice. So, you know, when I, I installed Fedora 24 recently and I wanted Telegram, I went and got a Telegram Snap and I, I installed Telegram on Fedora using Snappy. It was really kind of nice to just not have to worry about the fact that the Fedora project, oh, and VLC, which was nice because they don't package up VLC. So, I can't believe you're still using VLC. Uh, I know, I know, I know, that's true. All right, Mr. Dominic, is there anything else right. you want to touch on before we go? No, I'm uh, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm looking forward to the challenge solutions, mm-hmm. if only to play them on three screens at the same time. <laughs> and yeah, let's. Uh, ne- oh, next week we may have a guest. Or oh, maybe- oh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, maybe you and I will chat a little bit after that, after we get off we'll the air. Here. The, so yeah. uh, hey, guess what? You can follow us live. You know that. Go over to the Jupiter Broadcasting Calendar at jb.com slash calendar, jupiterbroadcasting.com slash calendar. Convert it right there to your local time zone. Follow us at Jupiter Signal for news. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chris Elias. Mr. Dumanuko over there. What are you on Twitter? Which one do we want them to follow this week? I think he's going to say... Hmm, nothing. I'm going to say follow the hardware switch. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> follow the hardware switch. We should get him a Twitter account. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, no, Thanks I so can... much. We'll see you back here next week. <laughs>